Hi, this is Munson with Munson Music, and I'm looking at Sweden from Minecraft. And randomly, if, if you already play piano and you read sheet music, I'll put a link here so you can find where uh, where the music is posted on the wonderful thing called the internet. So you won't have to listen through this tutorial, and you can just like look at the music and go, Hey, I'm going to play that, because this is really meant to be more of a crash course in reading sheet music via Sweden. So randomly, I'm looking at the, the chart, and you might want to print out the chart just so you've got that to look at. And up at the top is the title, Sweden, column three. Over on the right side, you'll see where the composer is there, music by C418, um, arranged by Sebastian Wolf, and that's uh, whose website I got this from. So thanks, Sebastian, for posting some cool Minecraft music. Um, and I got this request randomly from uh, my friend Eric, so this is really kind of a video for, for Eric to kind of like look at it and go, this is how I do that. Um, so, we're looking at the left side, you'll see something that says adagio, which is a very fancy uh, Italian word. Um, and then you'll see where it's got the quarter note equals 48. Randomly, that means how many beats are happening per minute. So, if I hit my little rhythm thing, I've got my beat set up. This is 48. Da, da, da. So it's kind of a, a kind of a slow tune. You'll also see something on the uh, left side, which is our grand staff. We have a treble clef on the top for piano music. We have a bass clef below it. Normally, the the treble clef is in the right for the right hand, and the bass clef is for the the left hand. Um, everything kind of gets referenced to the middle C. If you're familiar with the middle C, normally it's the C in the middle of your piano, but it's also the C that's between the two staves. So. If you're looking at the music trying to figure out what note is where, then everything kind of gets related to, to the staff. The treble clef is also known as the G clef. Um, if you turn it upside down, actually, it looks like kind of almost like a lowercase g, if that helps remember. But where it circles the G line, and a lot of times that G that it's circling is this, the G above middle C. So it's kind of circling this G note here. And if you look at the lines, You've probably heard at some point, every good boy does fine. That's for the, the notes that you end up with on the lines. So the E is kind of there right above middle C. Then the G, then the B, then the D. And the F is way up here. Randomly. Oh, it's that beautiful sounds of... Ew, nasty. Isn't that terrible? <laughs> but every good boy does fine. You'll also hear uh, Elvis's guitar broke down Friday. I like elephants got big dirty feet because that's true. Every good boy does not always do fine. And Elvis's guitar, and he probably's got a techie. So anyway, elephants got big dirty feet. If you're thinking of, of ways to try and remember the names of the notes on the lines, in the spaces are F A C E. So spells face. Very cool major seven chord there. That E minor would be what E minor seven with a flat nine. Hey, gotta love that that sound. Um, so if you're counting lines to try and figure out what note is where, that's kind of your basis. And it also goes alphabetical. So from the bottom line, E line to an F space to a G line to an A space to a B line to a C space to an E. Uh, or, uh, yeah, <laughs> so I think you kind of get the idea there. So, so it's also going alphabetical, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. And above that, randomly, if it's on that last line, that's that F. And if we needed to, we could add a note above that, go into a G, then you start adding in ledger lines to get to an A, and a B, and a C. And you could just continue that on up however many lines are there for, for ledger lines. With the bass clef, instead of it being the G clef, um, oh, although on the treble clef, you can go down as well. Actually, we have a lot of these notes in the chart, actually. Um, we've got our middle C, or our, our D right below the staff, then our C that's on the first line down from the staff, then a B below that, and A is two lines down, G, and then we have F would be three lines down. And it's weird when things start getting really cramped up. Sometimes you have to count, you know, oh gosh, is that the E or the G? You know, sometimes it's a, you may have to take a moment and kind of, kind of do that. And it's weird because it extends into what would be our bass clef, actually. Um, and in the tune, actually, there's a lot of cases where we're playing that, that E that would be on a bass clef staff normally, but it's notated as a, a ledger line. Actually, the very first notes that we play 
are that E and the G above it below middle C. It would normally be written in the bass clef. Now the bass clef is normally for the left hand on the piano. And we have uh, different mnemonics, different things to remember. <laughs> now it's good boys do fine always for our lines. And in the spaces, I, I, I like this one, is uh, all cars eat gas, which is not true, but eh, if it helps you remember, A, C, E, G is for the spaces on the bass clef. So it's still alphabetical, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A is that top line, then we end it with the B, that would be a, right above the bass clef staff, and then the middle C, which is where those two clefs cross over. So, looking at any music, it can always be a good idea if you're interested, no matter what instrument it is that you consider your primary instrument. Um, it can be very cool just to kind of like look at, uh, for instance, if you're in church and you're like really bored with the sermon, you can pull out your hymnal and go <laughs> and, and, and try and figure out what note is where. That can be good, just the more you see it, the easier it is for you to recall it and go, hey, that's C, and I know where it is on the piano or whatever instrument you play. So with the bass clef, just like the treble clef, you can't extend it with ledger lines. So above that middle C, you could go to a, a D above that, or E above that, or F above that, or G above that, etc. And below that staff, and we do have some cases where we're doing this um, from that low G, we have some cases where we got, and actually this happens in the intro, actually, um, where we have, we're reading the note name F, we'll talk about key signatures in a moment, and then one line down from the bass clef is the E, another line down from that is the D, and then it continues on. So two lines down would be the C, then the B, three lines down to the G, or the A and the G. So, so you may want to, you may have to kind of count those two. So a lot of times in a piece of music, you will also see a collection of sharps or flats around those clefts at the very beginning. That's called the key signature, and it has to do with what major scale the tune is relating to because composers are lazy people, and they don't want to have to write out every single time it's a sharp or a flat for a particular note if it's related to a particular key. So instead, they relate it to a major scale. Um, major scale is your do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. If you started on a C note on the piano, that would be all the white keys, which makes it an easy scale to remember. And it can be good to even just to call those notes out randomly if, if you're not familiar with major scales. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, C, B, A, G, F, E, D, C. Um, Although, our piece is not related to C major. <laughs> uh, well, it is tonality-wise, I guess, but not to a C note instead. Um, with the key signature, if you're seeing sharps, which is what we're seeing at the very beginning, if you add, there's something called the order of sharps, which goes fried chicken goes down awful easy brother. So you have F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, A sharp, E sharp, and B sharp that get added to a piece. So if you saw one sharp over there near that little treble clef or the bass clef, that would mean it's in the key of G major, which has one sharp. You'd have G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and G if you want G to sound like Do. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one is kind of your G major. And you, you may have even seen like the circle of fists thing, which is a, a beautiful, wonderful, awesome thing that kind of tells you like if you go to, the, if you see this key signature, it's the key of C major, G major, D major, you know, just depending on how many sharps you see. For our song, we have two sharps, so we have an F sharp and a C sharp. And if you have those two notes going on, randomly D is what sounds like Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. So if we tried that, <laughs> we'd have D and E and F sharp, and then G and then A and then B and then C sharp and then D. Randomly, I'm taking a, a old school fingering for that. I'm going one, two, three with, with my right hand right now and then doing a thumb under thing where I take the thumb and go to the G and then kind of lay it out one, two, three, four, five finger wise. So I'm kind of trying to lock that in, but it depends on what you're looking at as to whether that fingering is the best fingering for something. So you, know, you always want to experiment with different fingerings, but what that is is a big clue to the things we're gonna see in Sweden as soon as you see that D major thing. Now randomly, it, it, you may see uh, some flats and all those kind of relate to, to major scale. If you saw three sharps, you'd be in the key of A major. If you saw four sharps, you'd be in the key of E major. If you're seeing five sharps, you're in the key of B major. If you see six, you're in the key of F sharp major. If you see seven.
seven, oh God, why did they even write in this key? Uh, then you're in the key of C sharp major where you start having to think of uh, B sharps, which are really C, and E sharps, which are really F. So that, I know that's weird, C sharp, D sharp, E sharp, which is really F, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, and then B sharp, which is really C, and then C sharp. But randomly, I'm sure there are other videos on YouTube that kind of cover major scale patterns on the piano. So going on with Sweden randomly. Um, and the flat keys, there's the order of flats, B, A, D, G, C, F, right, B, greatest common factor. Um, if you want to help, help remember the flats, and those relate a little bit different. But anyway, back to Sweden. Well, we got a D major scale that you want to practice the heck out of, because that's the, the key that everything's relating to. And what I also like to do for myself is to think about what chord shapes or what chords are in that key. Chords always come in the same order in a major key. So you'd have a D major chord, would be D, F sharp, and A. Um, an E minor chord would be E, G, and B. We see a lot of that in Sweden. So you may want to just block through these chords just to get them under your fingers. So F sharp minors, F sharp, A, and C sharp. So I'm building all the chords root three, five, if you're familiar with building chords. It's basically a skip, skip thing, you know, because like third sound, awesome. Which is one to three, or three to five, you know. For, for these chords too, also like this is a random thing too, but I'm I'm just a theory guy. A D major is root three five. When you go to the E, what makes it minor is the third is just a little bit lower. So normally I think of that as a flat three root. Flat three five is the E G B. So the F sharp is a minor root flat three five. The G is a major G B D. Right, sounds happy again. So it's like happy, sad, sad. Happy, <laughs> and then when you go to the A, it's happy. A, C sharp, and E is your A major. See a good bit of that in the song. Then we got a B minor, where we got B, D, F sharp. That happens actually in the very last line, like measure 19, we go to a B minor chord. And then you'd have something nasty called C sharp diminished, which is a C sharp E and a G. And we call that diminished because now we have a flat third and then a flat uh, a fifth. And then from there we go to the D major. I know if I'm talking all this root three five stuff and you're like, I don't get it. Basically, it kind of works like this. You've got D major that's root three five. If I take the third, the F sharp, and make it a regular F, that's what makes that chord sound sad, is the third. So that's the flat three. If I took the A and I flatted it, then that would give me an A flat. That's the diminished sound, which sounds nasty, because that tritone there, that flat five thing is where it's at. going on but anyway so we've got kind of a D diminished uh, would look like that so basically randomly this chord or this scale D F sharp G A B C sharp D gives us the scenario of major minor minor major major minor diminished and then back to major it's just like what I end up with if I build chords out of a major scale is just kind of that, that one. And some people will refer to these in, uh, around numbers, like D is the one chord, E minor is the two chord, F sharp minor is the three chord, G major is the four chord, A major is the five chord, B minor is the six chord, C sharp diminished would be the seven chord. And randomly, if you threw an A on that, you end up with an A seven chord, a dominant seven chord which you will see a, a good bit too. So randomly, I've now got a root three, five, and a flat seven. So you see him more than anybody else. And then, um, so when you're playing C-sharp diminished, it's really a little piece of an A7, which really helps point back to D. Right? <laughs> you hear that all the time in classical music, right? up another topic which is something called inversions <laughs> um i was looking for other places i could play these three notes d f sharp and a this is what's called root position if i have the d as the lowest note there are definitely some places in the tune actually where we're using some different shapes for that chord so just look at them for d really quick um you'd have d f sharp and a is one way to play the d major chord another way to play that d major chord is going f sharp a and d i'm playing exactly the same three notes and it still sounds like a D chord, but now the, the, the root is in the top, and I'm playing it three, five, or root, which is called first inversion. Randomly, they used to call this a three, six chord, because you're playing a third above the bass and, and a sixth above the bass. I know I'm still playing that D bass in, in the bottom, right, if you want to hear it as a real inversion. 
would sound like that with the F sharp in the bass. And then from there, you play the same three notes by going A, D, and F sharp. That happens in the tune quite a bit for uh, some of the A, D majors. And so you may want to kind of hear that. Something called second inversion. Now I'm playing a five root three, and then you back to D major. And just by itself, actually, that is a cool thing just to get used to those shapes, right? Just to kind of move around with them. And one way to kind of get used to that a little bit more, too, is even arpeggiate them. That kind of thing could be cool, so you want to play around with that. Great idea for the end of a piece, right? To do some arpeggiation. But, back to Sweden. Because we're supposed to be talking about Sweden. I feel like Arlo Guthrie. I'm like, you know, it's all about Alice and the restaurant and da da da. And <laughs> oh, back to, oh yeah, it's a song about Sweden. All right, so, or it's supposed to be a lesson about Sweden. So, if we're looking at Sweden and you go and you figure out what notes are where, what you will see at the very beginning of, of the piece, oh, randomly, I forgot to talk about the time signature too. It says 4-4, four, four, which means you've got four beats on the floor, quarter notes. Um, I know I'm talking more about notes and spacings, and this is, like I said, this is kind of like a crash course in how to read sheet music. But, so at the very beginning, if you counted down those ledger lines on the treble clef, you would see an E note and a G note in the right hand. Now the left hand has this cool bass line doing an E note exactly the same time. So if notes are lined up, I'm, I'm going to say this right, vertically, <laughs> they all happen at the same time, and we read the notes from left to right, just like a book. So... So you've got an E note in the left hand in the bass clef with an E and a G in the right hand in the treble clef. So you do all those together. And then we go to an F sharp by itself. It's like quarter note versus half note idea, which is cool. Then the left hand's going to a G note and the right hand is going up to an A and a D at the same time. But then we go to a B by itself. And then we've got an A note with an F sharp and an A at the same time. Little pieces of chords we just talked about. And then we go to a G in the left. And then we go to a low D note with an A and a C sharp. A little piece of the A chord. But it's cool how this all works. Because in that bass line, a lot of times, especially if you're working on a piece like this, it can be really cool to just take one hand and isolate it. Half the bass line for this whole song is this one bass line where you've got E, F sharp, G, B, A, G, and then D. So you may want to practice that a lot, right? E, F sharp, G, B, A, G, D. <laughs> e, F sharp, G, B, A, G, D. That kind of thing. Um, so you may want to practice that a lot just to get used to it. The right hand is a lot more busy through the tune, although hand isolation is a great practice idea. So, so even just taking just the right hand to get used to going from that E and G to the A and D to the F sharp and A to the A and C sharp, right? Or, uh, yeah, it's A and C sharp. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. So, so you may want to just practice just that by itself a good bit, too. So E and G, A and D, F sharp and A, and then A and C sharp. So it's kind of cool we, if, if you were counting intervals, if you're an interval person, what intervals are is where you're counting numbers, like how many is that in the scale? So on the first part, we got a third, E to G, right? But then we're going to a fourth, the A and D, one, two, three, four, right? And then we got the F sharp and A, which is a third again, and then we got the A and C sharp, which is the third again. A, B, C sharp. So it's a little piece of the chords though. Um, so it's kind of around the E minor chord. And then this is kind of a cool sound. Let's see, we got G, D, and A, which is actually sort of like a G sus 2. And then you got the B, so they fill in the third. So then it's A major, or G major, or G major 9, I guess, if you want to think about it that way. And then we got F sharp and A. I know I'm talking gibberish now, but <laughs> um, then we go to the A note with the F sharp and A, which is sort of, what's that? That's sort of a F sharp minor chord in first inversion. And then we got the G, and then we got the D with the A and the C sharp. So that's almost like the top part of a, well, it's like an A major chord, but with a D in the bass. Actually, that's how they have it marked. You'll see the chords, chord charts over the top 
which is kind of cool. Um, so th this is called an A major chord on the chart, A slash D with a D in the bass. So they're trying to kind of give you an idea of like what chords are going on too, which is a, a very cool thing. You don't see that in every chart. You don't see it in the hymnal, that's for sure. But you got the E and G with the E, F sharp, and then what they're calling G sus two. And then kind of get the B to resolve it. And then we got the A with F sharp and A. Sort of a, they're calling it D major, but I don't see a D note there, so I, I don't know what they're doing. Oh, maybe because of this D note, because now it's definitely a D chord, sort of got an A and C sharp in the top. So I don't know, because sometimes chords just, charts can be, uh, I don't know, that, God, that's what I do all the time, isn't it? it it's just interesting to me though, like how the, they'll change the chords in the tune, even though it's really almost sort of the same progression. So, so it's like the first time it happens it's E minor G sus two, but then the second time it happens it's E minor D slash A, and then they got the F sharp minor slash A, I don't know. Yeah, it might be easier looking at the notes, especially if you want it to sound right. So anyway. So that's our first phrase, our first two measure deal is that E and E minor, and then the A sharp A, and then the A and C sharp. And then a lot of the rest of it actually is kind of like little embellishments of that. Like if you look at the, the next two measures, now they're filling in more of the chords. So now you're doing E, G, and B in the right hand all together, and then the F sharp, and now we've got a D chord inversion. We got an A, a D, and an F sharp with the G, B idea. And then we got an F sharp, A, and C sharp with the A. So, and then the G buzz up. And then we got the D with a root position A major. Right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you may want to kind of play around with that too. It's, it's almost like make, taking the first idea and then just making it thicker, which is kind of cool. Then the next two measures, actually we kind of, kind of to just keep on trucking through this. We got the E minor, right, F sharp, and we got that same inversion actually. And then the B, actually the same thing, isn't it? Yep. So we actually repeat that idea. Okay, cool. So if you practice measure three and four, then you have measure five and six, obviously. Um, now this is where things get interesting though, is at the very end of that first uh, line, is now, now we got the E minor chord, just like we did. But when that F sharp happens, you'll see the A note in the top part. Where So we do the F sharp with a higher A, an A higher than middle C, with the F sharp at the same time. Then we do the B note by itself. And then we've got the G, but we've got the D chord up here, the A, D, and F sharp. And then the B happens, but then we have a D right above middle C for a D, E idea. And randomly, if, if you're like, man, talking craziness what you need to do is is get pull out a pen print the chart and then just start writing in what notes are where and it's awesome practice it's really good maybe i'll uh, i'll put up a link with uh with or post this on facebook or something like just scan this uh one in with some notes written in but anyway so you might kind of dig on that so um so you got the e minor and then the f sharp and a and then the g with the d major And then we've got the A major and second version, and with the oh, that's, 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 oh wait, hold on, that's a F sharp minor. My bad, with the A. right, <laughs> the G F sharp A above middle C, then the A major with the D. Yeah, let's try that again. Let's see. So we got E minor, A B, and then and then this is fun. Let's see. Yep. Cool. And then, uh, oh, that's very nice. Uh, okay, you know, they, and it's cool. Actually, I, I would really encourage you, especially if you're just starting out, or no matter what level you're on. Actually, I like something I call loop practice, where I'll take, uh, I might even take just that first measure, actually, and not even worry about the whole phrase. Just the. it so then you could do it again like a broken record or a skipping CD so that could be a cool idea and then you could take the next measure and add it in you know when you kind of feel like you've got a good, good handle on that part oh wait sorry I missed my F sharp 
So that could be really cool just to take a couple measures and, and, and take it as slow as you need to to keep the rhythm even. Um, I, I feel like uh, a lot of times that's a, a big beginner error is they think they're supposed to go too fast or something. I, I, I think if you, and I'm, I'm guilty of it too, everybody gets, oh, I'm fed up with this, I'm going to throw the guitar across the room, I'm going to break the keyboard, I, I, you know, you just get frustrated with something, but, but the uh, main idea here is just to take it really slow, so that you can kind of get down the idea, keep this in that, that, that short, I keep on wanting to make it in, an A major chord, sorry, um, which it still sounds good, it's like, who would notice that, right, but... <laughs> If you play Minecraft a million hours, then yes, you might reckon I miss that. Ah, oh, I'm gonna make get it right this time. Cool. So you might want to kind of play around with that. You know, kind of taking two measure phrases could be a really good idea through this. And actually, it feels like when you're playing Minecraft, it just oh man, this is just such an open, ambient, cool tune in general. It's like you could take two measures and just play them over and over and over again. So this this could be a really good meditation kind of practice tune. So, looking at the next two measures, um, to kind of kind of look at that, we've got the E minor idea, but now we're jumping up to a D above the, or in the treble clef, then we've got the F sharp with a B note at the same time, and then the A note, then we've got our G with our D inversion again, and then our B note followed by the D E. So that's almost the same thing we were just doing, but now it's getting kind of embellished a little bit too. Uh, we've got the F sharp minor with the A, G, A, F sharp, that part's staying the same, and, and the A major. So now I'm looking at, what, what measures are these? Eight, nine, ten, measures nine and ten. Randomly, I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm going ahead and playing a lot of that, that thicker stuff, like the big chords. If you want a cheat, um, and if you're starting out, a lot of times it's nice to know some, some good cheats. And actually, we're about to get to some parts where you're just going to have to freaking choose like which part you want because we can't do this as a multi, or I don't want to do this as a multi-track thing. So, so there's some notes on the page where it's like, well, I could do that, but it's a ninth stretch and, or a tenth stretch or, or something ridiculous. And, and they're throwing in those other chords. How do they do that? You can do it as a roll, you know, to try and get in everything, or you could just simplify it, which sometimes can be a little bit easier. So if we were going to simplify measure nine and 10, um, you could just forget about the holy minor chord and play just the top part in the right hand. So just the B note with the E note to kind of kick it off if you wanted to. And then kind of jump up to your D. And then we got the F sharp with the B note and the A. And instead of the whole chord, you could play just that F sharp the, kind of above the chord. So instead of doing the A, D, and the F sharp all together, you could say, well, to hell with that. I'm just going to play the F sharp at the same time. And actually, I, I, God, guys who sight read all the time just freak me out. I'm, I'm not a good piano sight reader. I, I should practice this more. I'm just picking out different tunes and doing different things on piano. Um, but but it's amazing because they know where to drop stuff when you just don't need it, you know. And, and, and when you're playing a D chord, this is a random example, um, but a lot of times when you once you've played even just the one note, just the D note, you're actually going to hear all these other notes of the chord, just the way that the physics works, without even playing it. So if you drop something and you still got the bass underneath it, you're not really losing as much as you think. You know, it's, it's a really subtle difference between and it, it's, who's going to care, right? So, so you may want to look at spots where you could be like, well, I don't want to do that whole thing. I'm just going to take part of it and just X out the notes you don't want to want to deal with. So, so, but to look at the way it's supposed to be, right? Um, you have that E minor with the E minor, D, and then the F sharp with the B, A, and then we got our G with the D chord inversion, and then the B, D, E, then we got our F sharp minor in the right hand with the A note, and then the G, A, F sharp, and then we end on the A major. So when you get to the, the uh, measure 11, so third system down, um, this is where you may start having to kind of choose some stuff. If we were going to look at, at everything and the way it's lined up, you've got the E minor in the right hand with the E note in the left, right? But then we've got the F sharp note with our A, B. Kind of looked at that. But then you have this crazy, crazy thing that looks like something out of a hymnal where they split things from almost like a two-part harmony into one, two, three, four, into five voices. So now we have a G in the left. We have an A above that. All right, I'm at a bad angle for this completely, but 
then we got a D and an F sharp, and then the D above that. So it's all these together. If you have the hands for that, I congratulate you. If um, for myself, I would probably leave out the A note right there because I just feel like it. And, and I may even leave out the D or the F sharp and just make it a, a G to D thing, which doesn't sound as cool, that's true. Um, or you could throw in the F sharp. Or you could, what else could you do here? I guess you could just shift the A by an octave and just make it a D chord thing. F sharp A D, right? Because we got that A, yeah. Yeah, you could work it that way too. That D, you're, yeah, there's, an, a, there's already a D in the chord, so you could just drop that if you wanted to. And then we have this crazy thing where we do the B, but then we've got a D up in the treble clef, right? I'm going with the right hand, because this, this, this is a really big stretch, is the D to the F sharp in the treble clef right there after the B note, the last part of measure 11. So you, you got, you, you could jump up into it, Right, but but the thing is, it's supposed to be D and F sharp into E's together, and then it resolves to the D and the C sharp with a C sharp below that. Oh, I gotta love that! Like if you're looking at just that one hand, it's just I don't have the hands for that. You know, I, I maybe I should just buy a smaller piano or something. So I'm gonna simplify that because I I wouldn't want to deal with that. So so I would do I would still do the E minor chord because I, I just like chords. And then we do the F sharp with the A, B. And then I think I'm gonna do the G with the D and the F sharp, I kinda like that. Right, and then we got the B, and I'm just gonna play the top part as that F sharp, E, and then that way I can kinda make it into that C, oh, and that C sharp's doubled. I'm just gonna do the D to the C sharp. Cause this, we have what? We have A, right, looking at measure 12. We got an A, an F sharp, and then an A above that. You can leave that A out completely, it's completely redundant. So so you can do the A and the F sharp if you want to make, oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, you, you, you could do that if you wanted to kind of keep the, that property there, or if you wanted to make it easy on yourself, you could play just the A with the D and F sharp, or you could play even the A with just that C sharp up on the top. And then we'd have the G. Actually, I'm just gonna do it as a two part, because that could be a cool example. So, so E and B, and then we got the A, B. And then we got the G with the D, then the B note, and then F sharp, E, and then the C sharp with the A. Yeah, I like this. And then D, C sharp, and then the A with the D. Oh, it's a two part. That made it a lot easier. Oh, I love myself for that idea. All right, so <laughs> I'm cheating and I love it. Let's see, so we got E and B, and then we got the A, B. Then we got the A with the F sharp and let's see D F sharp. Oh right, I was just the two part. Duh. Oof. I missed the A there at the end, but I didn't play it loud enough. So you may want to kind of play around with that. If if you are skillful enough to do this, and you have the hands and dexterity to pull off all those notes, I I salute you. Um, so. You know, it's kind of an interesting thing because we're looking at, at music that happens in a video game. So I mean, you can you can record as many piano tracks as you want to. So as to whether that's something that somebody pulled off for real or just recorded it that way, you know, it's it's a simple it's a, it's a piano reduction of, of something you hear in a video game. So, eh, who knows? Um, so if we kept that two part going, actually, that might make it uh, the next uh, measures a little bit easier. So measure thirteen four or thirteen yeah thirteen fourteen. Um, you'd have the E and the B, then we jump up to a B with the F sharp, and then the A, then we got the G and the F sharp, and then the B, then the D, E, and then the A with the C sharp, and then the G, and then F sharp, A, and then the E with the D. Like in the two part idea, so if you, if you want to steal that, feel free. feel really good on that. Um, then if we're looking at measure 15, it looks like we got more embellishment kind of stuff. So if, if we kept the two-part idea going, and, and actually, see, I, I just like throwing in that E minor chord on the first one though, I think. Uh, e minor, we got the F sharp with the A, B. Then we got our G with our D chord inversion. Digging on that with the chords. D, E, and then we got our F sharp minor with the A, G, F sharp, A, and then the D with A. Ah, I believe we've played this before. 
<laughs> that's always a wonderful thing in a piece of music. It's like, if I practice these two measures, then I actually have these two measures too, because it's the same thing. So, um, so th that loop practice idea we were talking about, just taking just, you know, one thing and kind of practicing it a good bit. You know, you're really not just practicing just those two measures. Sometimes you're practicing a lot more of the piece than you really realize. Um, and then it looks like we have a little variation, measure 17, 18, right before the, the grand finale. Um, we've got our E minor, and then our F sharp with the A, B idea. If I'm doing the reduction, I've got the G with a D note, right? If I want to fill it in, that could be cool. Or if I want to play what's on the page, I can't make this stretch from here. Maybe that G to A is what you really have. And then we got our D, E. And then we got our A with the sharp minor. And then this is fun. We got the high F sharp with the G note. But that's kind of cool. Like a little embellishment of the F sharp minor thing or idea. And then we got the A major, right? So measure 17, 18, you got the E minor, A, B, and I'm gonna reduce this. Uh, G with the D, B, and then D, E, and then the A with the A major, or the F sharp minor. And then this is the fun part. And then we got that A with the D. All right, then we're on to measure 19. Now this is where things are different, actually. Our chord progression changes, because for the most part, we've, we've been kind of working you know, that, that main chord progression, sort of. I guess we're re kind of reducing it. Oh, I, I want the F sharp minor here, sorry. <laughs> you know, if I'm just following the chords on the top kind of thing. Um, but now, now things change. So randomly now we have a B minor chord going to an E major chord. I'm looking at the top just for the chord progression, just because things change. Then we got an A major. Now I'm playing everything in reposition too. And we have a G major chord. Cool. And it says we have a B minor, and then an E major, and then an A major, and then a G major at the end. Now th this is grandiose, I believe. Um, but let's take a look at what's on the page. A lot of times, th this is kind of a cool lesson actually, that, that bass clef part where you've got the B, um, and then there's some crazy note underneath that, right? Um, that's two ledger lines down. A lot of times when you start seeing notes that far apart in a bass clef scenario, a lot of times they're the octave. So if, if just for reading's sake, a lot of times if you see, oh, it's a B with a low something, a lot of times that low something is another B note. It's like a double bass part. It also means that it's redundant. It's just making it thicker. Because B to B, you don't really hear, if I play that, it's really subtle difference to that right so like the E notes like if we're looking at just the left hand for a moment um, so E's together then we got A's together and then we have G's together so we got B notes octave E notes octave A notes octave um, and then we have some crazy embellishment of the of the G chord and it's marked as a gliss actually which means you would play the low G and then you jump up to the D note in bass clef and then play a G and a B, so it's like a second inversion G major chord. And I don't have my pedal hooked up for a sustain pedal, but normally you would hit the sustain pedal. I would hit the sustain pedal because it's the last chord of the tune. And then you would hit the low G, and then jump into that second inversion. It's kind of like a roll, and you'll hear them all, you know, sustain because it's a sustain pedal. And I, I didn't even think about a sustain pedal. I, a lot of times I like playing uh, clean because I feel like I use the sustain pedal too much, like a reverb pedal. Um, but anyway, so so we have the B octave. And in the right hand, we have a B minor chord, B, D, F sharp at the same time. Then we've got a B, A. And then we've got the E octave with the E note. And we've got a B note. And we got a F sharp note. Or wait, no, a G sharp note. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, so. Oh, G sharp. Oh, my bad. Sorry, it's the G sharp. G sharp, B, E. Ah, there we go, yeah. So it's a first inversion E major chord. Kind of hit that E again for the E D. So eh, I want to try that again. All right, so we got the B minor with the octave or with the chord B A. Then we've got the E with the E major chord E D. And then we got the let's see, yeah 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 yeah. So we got the A major with the A octave, and then the D E. And then we have our G with uh let's see, we got an E note. Oh, they're making it an E major six. Cool E. And then we got our G and B. So is it a G chord or is it an E minor and inversion? Hmm. Um, 
Well, I think I just missed something there, because actually that should be... Wow, I didn't count that far enough. Let's count together. B, A, G, F, E, D. That's supposed to be a low D. Yeah, D, and then G and B. Yeah, my bad, sorry. So it's, it's a second inversion G major. Oh wow, I've talked about that uh, too long and, and not played it correctly. So you can hate on me if you want to, that's cool. Um, and cause the hate is gonna hate, hate. All right, so, so we got B minor, <laughs> we got our B, A, then we got our E major, and they're going up. This feels so weird at this angle on this piano. And then we got our A major with the A, and then we got our D, and then we got our G major chord. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? Oh my gosh. All right, and then if we're looking at measure uh, 21, right, last two measures, um, we've got the B minor octave again. Randomly with these octaves, though, if you do want to make it easier, actually going back to measure 19, because uh, we're, we're just already in it. If, if you want to, you could take that B note and just play one if that feels weird for your hand, right? You don't really need both of those if you don't want to, to play those. You could just make it a single note idea on the, the, the same thing, right? So you can, eh, just something to, to keep in your mind if you want to make it easier. Also, if you want to make the rest of it more difficult, you could actually reinforce that bass line that we've been doing with octaves, randomly. So it, it can, just makes things sound really uh, sickly awesome. Um, you can also shift things by octave. So if um, if you have a small keyboard randomly, I, I had a, I, I remember when I was practicing Moonlight Sonata in my apartment, it was like 61 key and there's like all this octave stuff, you know, it's the whole, you know, that, that kind of thing, you know, with all the octaves, you know, it's a lot, a lot of chord stuff. Um, so I didn't have all the notes on my piano. So I remember like in some of the diminished runs, um, I can't remember exactly what, but, but anyways, I just remember I had to sing like three of the notes and then in the left hand, I just had to drop the octaves at points because I didn't have that note. So so to, to reduce it that way, like measure 19, um, you, you could completely just make that uh, just a, a you know one, one note thing. So we got the B minor and then the B, A, E with the E, G sharp B, and then E, D, and then we got our A major chord with our A. That's kind of straight up. And then we got our G. Or if you're digging on the the one the two part idea, just playing just the top part, that could be cool too. So you'd have the B with the F sharp, and then the B A, and then E with the E, and then E D, and then the C sharp with the A, and then D E, and then the G with the B. So you may just want to really make it really simple and just kind of do it that way. Um, so then in measure 21, last two measures, we've got a B minor chord, B D F sharp with another D on top of it. So if you can make this stretch, you know, and you could, and you could, you, you could glisten to it, you know what I mean? Like B, D, F sharp, high D kind of thing, or you could just drop the, some of those notes. So I've already got a B note in this chord. I'm gonna drop the, the B below it. So then I've got, uh, I'm gonna take the D and the F sharp and the D. If you're doing the one part, you could just play the D on the top. Actually, that's the easiest way. Maybe we should do that first. So B and D. A, and then we got the E with the E, and then the E, and then we got a D with the E above it. Oh my gosh, um, can, can we do that? I can sort of make that, but if I'm doing the, the reduction, I would just go E to E and forget about the D on the bottom, and then do the A with the C sharp, and then the D, F sharp, and then maybe hit that low E. Yeah, I'm just taking like notes on the top, you know, so it's, it's kind of weird at the, at the end actually. It's kind of a cool little two part actually. Um, oh, and at the very end, we'd have that B to a B in the right hand, low G, right? And then we kind of listen to that, uh, yeah, that DGB. It's interesting because actually we have, it, it, that's an interesting thing at the very, very end. On the very last chord, that B note that's on the treble clef staff is the same B note that's on the top of the bass clef staff. So I don't know exactly why you would want to play it with two fingers but you will see weird stuff like that in piano charts so maybe that's a cool thing to have at the end and go it's down there twice wow why do we need it twice um but so but the, the easiest way out would be just playing the g note with a b note right at the very end so we did a two-part uh reduction like i'm taking uh lowest note and top and toppest note <laughs> notes um might be the easiest way out so i'm gonna take the low b just for fun so we got the d and the b and then the B, 
A and then the E with the E. Oh, oh, wait, hold on, stop, guys. Uh, that was terrible. Let's let's do that again. Uh, B and D, and then the B A, and then we got the E with the E, and then the E, and maybe I could jump into the high E, and then the A with the C sharp, and then the D F sharp E, and I might just leave that out just to be able to get to that B quicker. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna ignore that D E B note and the D line in the middle of that because that, that would just make it easier. So B and D, B, A, E with E, and then E, E, and then the A and C sharp, and then the D, F sharp, and then G and B. So that might be a kind of a nice way to do it. Randomly, I would attempt this the way it is written, um, which is going to be kind of ridiculous without my pedal. But anyway, so I have the B minor or the B octave with the B minor chord. Maybe jump into that D and then the B A. Then I've got my E major inversion with the E octave in the left. And then the E. And then maybe I'll pick this up with the left hand for that D and E at the same time. And then I've got, now this is kind of crazy too. Then I'm back to the A octave. I've got the E, I'm sorry, E A C sharp. Maybe I jump up to that high C sharp and then do the D. And then on the F sharp, I'd have to hit the other D. Maybe I do that in the left hand. And then I hit the B note or octave in the right hand when I do the low G. And then I jump into that uh, roll. So there's that same B note thing. That was a lot to talk about. Um, yeah, let's try that. B minor. Jump into the D. B, A. And then we've got the E major inversion with the E octave. And then the E. Maybe I do. Oh, I wanted to do those together. D and E, and then the C sharp. But, oh, let's do the low part first, though. And that's that. Let's see. As A G F E. That, yeah, that's that A major inversion. Yeah, cool. So A major, C sharp, and then D, and then right on that F sharp, I gotta play a D note, and then jump into the B octave for the big finish that kind of thing so especially if you got the sustain pedal down you know or you could and it says poco rit, uh, that poco rit uh, actually before that those last four measures means a little slower <laughs> or slow down a little bit is what uh, the retardando thing or rit dot means so this part's a little slower so so maybe yeah i guess that's that's all good so you got the b minor and then you can kind of almost free form some of that you know it's like oh yeah Yeah, like if I had the pedal on, that that would probably help that a lot. Um, I got the C sharp. Oh God! Oh right, I'm taking the low part first. Ah, duh. Okay, cool. And then the A, C sharp, and then the D thing, and then the B finish. So, anyway, that was that was a crazy thing to talk through, and I think I would have to go and practice for quite a while to really be able to pull that off um, from a performance standpoint. Um, I just sight read through it a little bit last night, and so now I'm just kind of trying to get through this up so Eric can can, can hopefully play this and kind of look at it and not be scared of it. And hopefully, we talked about some things that were useful for any pianist. Um, you know, or, or somebody, especially starting out on piano, if you're looking at really crazy stuff and you're like, man, I just don't know what to do, man. Um, Cause that's always kind of a cool, you know. Oh yeah, oh, and that could be a really cool chord progression to play around with too, you know. Um, we're, we're, we're in D major, sort of. And I say that, I don't know if, if you start hearing the E minor like home bass, then that would actually be a modal thing. It's something called Dorian. If you're playing, if you're, in a D major scale, but you can come back to E. I don't know, it's probably arguable that, that it's a really a Dorian idea at the very beginning instead of a major idea. That's a weird thing we didn't talk about with key signatures, because sometimes you just don't know. Um, even though it's relating to a major key, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's the note that's home based the way that you hear it. Yeah, it's because you might have a natural minor thing or something. Like that. Anyway, it's kind of a modal thing, um, a little bit on that beginning part. So. I, I, but you may want to take that main chord progression. You got the E minor with the bass line, and the G, and then the D, right? Um, and I say that that's the F sharp minor, isn't it? Yeah. And then kind of 
kind of that B with the A, or the A with the D in the bass, that progression. So E minor, G, and then that sharp minor with the A in the bass, and then that A major with the D in the bass. But randomly, you could even take that if you just want to play around with it, you know what I mean? Because it's really about this bass line. You, you could use the D major scale, you'd probably start hearing it as the Dorian thing. Actually, this is how bad. You probably start. You just hear the melody in your head. Though. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like it's there somewhere, and we just talked about it. Um, but randomly, you, you could use the the major scale to improvise other ideas. Trying, trying to kind of give you that idea it's like almost like a free form idea um that i like to do with, with easier chord progressions I'm, I'm just trying to keep that that bass line going but that could be cool to just kind of see what melodies kind of come out of you Rather than looking at the music after you're done, and actually this is just part of, of, of memorization too, actually, because eh, you're going to end up in some place where there's a piano, and you didn't bring your sheet music, and somebody's going to go, oh man, play something for me. <laughs> so, so that could be cool to even just, even if it's just a couple things, actually just that, like we talked about the loop practice, you could just get down that first idea. Um, and have something to practice, you know, just when you're hanging out with your friends, you know, they'd be like, oh, Minecraft, cool, man, that's awesome. Um, so anyway, there's lots of ways to approach uh, all of this. Actually, hopefully, uh, I gave you some ideas to, to work with, and hopefully this helped Eric. This was to help Eric, so. Uh, it may, might help some other people, too, so if, if it does, leave a comment, you know, spread some love. Uh, go check out my cover uh, lessons on... Uh, Munson covers and Munson music live and I've and, uh, got jam tracks on Munson jam tracks if you just want chords to jam over. So anyway, lots of stuff there. Thanks for watching and uh, best of luck. Don't forget to subscribe.